headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thanks for hanging out with us, America. We're so glad you're here. My co-host today, Ramsey personality, Jade Washaw. And for this segment, we invited Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author of the book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future. And apparently getting ready to be a number one best-selling author on this new one called Building a Non-Anxious Life. Uh, we put this thing up for sale in pre-sale yesterday, and it is breaking records. Thank you, guys. We appreciate your response to it. Apparently, there's a lot of people that need to build a non-anxious life, or they know someone that does. And so thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate your response. The book is $20, and we give you $75 worth of goodies to pre-purchase it. The book will actually be shipped to you on pub date, October 3rd, along with the audiobook, the ebook. And right now, as soon as you buy it, we're going to send you a copy of John's, uh, one of his talks as well, which is a really good talk. And so this whole subject of anxiety. Misunderstood, isn't it, John? Yeah, we, we've got a whole culture designed to help people not feel anxious anymore. And I think we've gone about that all the wrong way. I think anxiety is our body trying to get our attention and say, hey, we're not okay on, a, on, on multiple areas. You're, we're not okay. And if you just climb up in your, in your kitchen, man, and you pull the batteries out of the smoke alarm, you've stopped the noise, man, but your house is going to burn down around you. Yeah. I mean, I, it, you should feel anxious if crap is going bad. Absolutely. I mean, if you're standing in the interstate and an 18-wheeler is coming at you, you should be anxious. Exactly. If, if you owe a bunch of money, if you're at a, at a place where you're not safe, if you're in an abusive relationship, if um, you haven't slept in four days and you live off Red Bull and, yeah. and— Taking pills to get rid of your anxiety doesn't solve the problem. Doesn't solve the pro- it does turn the alarms down. doesn't solve the problem, right? And so we just simply have to have a conversation um, across the country about— reimagining the way we do our lives. And hey, by the way, this is a conversation I've been having for several years with my friends who are medical practitioners, who are therapists, psychologists. Everybody knows. We know that it's it's kind of in this log jam and it just takes some people to have some have the conversation. We live in the most anxious all the data says the most anxious culture in history. It's wild, man. It's wild. And the wealthiest. Yeah. And the there's all these reasons it shouldn't be. But it is. It's we have fun. no saber-toothed tigers. Tigers. I'm 100. percent I've data to prove that. We have no saber-toothed there are tigers. no saber-toothed tigers chasing us, so we don't have to be anxious. But we have 10 o'clock texts from our bosses saying, "Where's the budget?" And we have emails, and we have mother-in-laws, and our bodies just can't handle it all, man. There so it what is. you're saying, it's no. not just a DNA genetic thing. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely not. That's one of the big ones. Is hey, this is just the way you are. Right. Sorry. Um, you, you have a disease. Yeah. You were you were born broken you're right. not your body's not right um almost there, there's some rare medical exceptions but almost always no some people are more sensitive like to the world i am mm-hmm. my wife is not right i can mm-hmm. say hey i think we're gonna die and she's like we're fine john right <laughs> so my, my my alarms are tuned a little, little more finely than hers um but no i'm not broken in any way yeah and there's six daily choices that you can engage in which will address the real problems the the real fire that's causing the smoke alarm to go off the problem is causing the anxiety to come up and if you address those six daily choices that's how you build a non-anxious life yeah and i think that what you said is important they're very hard though well and some of them some of them are going to be easy for people like for my wife budgeting and paying off debt okay that just makes sense for me a budget felt like I was getting dragged behind a boat, right? Um, for other people, like going to counseling, that wasn't hard for me. Like, I'll, I'm happy to do that. Some people will fight that tooth and nail. And so everybody has different challenges. Some of these are going to be easier. Some of these are going to be harder. But I've heard it said this way, and this isn't – definitely I didn't make this up. But if you want to begin to heal your mental health and you want to begin to change your emotional health, it's like brushing your teeth. We don't want to get cavities, and so we brush our teeth in the morning, we brush our teeth in the evening. And so really this book is laying it out as simple as brushing your teeth. Here are some things you can do every day. Here are some things you can do every week, every month um, that are going to create a culture where you might get the occasional cavity. And by the way, this book does not insulate you from bad things happening. Your mom's going to get sick. You're going to get a kid that um, gets bullied at school. You're going to lose your job. That's life. But this book is about giving you the margin and capacity to take life when it hits you in the mouth. And the life we live now, Dave, we're so spun up and burned out and anxious and fried. And then when life does what life does, we're out. We have no capacity. It just knocks you out of the saddle. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it, but this will fill you. You get your tank full, 
then stuff comes at you. You got a full tank to deal with it. Yep. Yeah, it's your, it's your only shot. So, good stuff. Building a non-anxious life. Uh, Ramsey Publishing's latest number one bestseller, I'm sure. Not yet officially, but we won't know till October. But by the way, you guys, speaking of that, can help us by pre-purchasing the book. It'll help John, help us. We appreciate it. So if you want to be a supporter of what we're doing, that one way you do it is simply buy the book early. We're going to bribe you to do it. The book's 20 bucks, <laughs> And we're going to give you $75 worth of goodies uh, to buy it early. And because all the sales we make before pub date count on pub date towards the bestseller list so legally technically we've got it all worked out no nobody scamming anybody we're we're not scamming the list we're just trying to sell a bunch of books and help a bunch of people pretty simple or help a bunch of people sell a bunch of books however that works and so jump on at ramseysolutions.com the book is called building a non anxious life dr john deloney's latest uh, we did issue a quick read back last year which is a chapter book basically 37 pages about read called redefining anxiety that sold 150,000 copies of this tiny little pamphlet book mm. and proving that this subject matters yeah and it was my buddies who were psychologists and counselors who are in, in, in medical doctors who were buying it by the case and just giving it to their their clients and their patients saying, hey, this is as simple as we can get it to you. We can help you out with this. And I think that's a, a, another important thing. I spent 20 years in higher education. I spent 20 years with some of the greatest, loving, wonderful scientists, great thinkers, great people. And this book isn't written for them. This book is written for folks who are who don't read a lot of books, who are just trying to, who just want, I got two, two kids and I just want a little more peace in my home. I'm an over the road truck driver and I just want to be a better dad. And I don't even know where to start. Um, this is the exhausted 50 year old mom who, who it has to do something different. This is the 61 year old dad. Who's just like, Hey, I want to re-engage with my kids after a lifetime of kind of being separate. This is a book for people who don't read books. This is, I try to make it as simple as possible and as direct and clean and clear as possible. Um, the goal here is not to sound smart. The goal here is to help people live a better life. Well, look, I'm a person who's not ever considered myself an anxious person. Mm -hmm. And I read Redefining Anxiety. I read Own Your Past, Change Your Future. I can't wait to read this book not because I think even if you're not a person who would say, I'm anxious, or there's so many day-to-day -day things that take place in our life that affect us. And you can just keep your head down and just keep going through acting like it's not having an effect on you. And it is. And even if you don't consider yourself uh, labeled in that way, there's still so much in this book that is going to be able to help you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Congratulations on another success, Dr. John. Thank you much for your support. Grateful. Dr. John Deloney, the book is Building a Non-Anxious Life, RamseySolutions.com. Click on the store. Get you one. This is The Ramsey Show. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by a hundred if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business, too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
Jade Walshaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Carlos is with us in San Antonio, Texas. Hi, Carlos. How are you? Hi. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Sure. What's up? Well, um, I live abroad. I live and work abroad. Um, I'm finally back in the U.S. after about four years. I was stuck because of COVID. Um, so about a year and a half ago, I sold my house while I was abroad. And I wanted to now finally uh, use the money and invest and make it work for me. Um, now I've been back in the U.S. for about two years. I have a meeting with a, a friend who's a banker. We're going to talk about possible investments, but, um, I have a friend who bought a piece of uh, property in Thailand for about 30, 30,000 in cash. And, um, I was thinking about doing the same thing. So I might actually be in Thailand in about the next three weeks or so to take a look at some things. Um, it's just the first time I've had a, quite a chunk of change in the bank with, uh, and being debt free. So I was looking to do something with that. What is the uh, size of the chunk of change? Uh, in the bank, I have about two, two hundred ninety thousand. Okay, and what do you make a year? Oof, uh, I would say about eighty thousand, but I pretty much live uh, for free. Not not for free, but it's very yeah. the cost okay. of living is very low. I got you. Yeah. Um, I would not buy that. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Because there's a bazillion $30,000 investments to do in the United States. And um, the Thai economy is excellent. Uh, it is a fairly stable situation. But there is not any, um, any close to any country in the world that is as stable and predictable an environment as the United States. And when I buy investments, I want stable and predictable. And um, the thing that we forget as Americans is, is that, uh, you know, ever so often, some of these countries just blow up. And I'm not predicting Thailand's going to blow up. That is not what I said, okay? But we're just not used to the uh, volatility of government, the volatility of things, um, and, and for uh, you have to have a predictable environment for economics to work. That's why law and order, order versus uh, the opposite of order is chaos. And so when you have chaos, you do not have a predictable environment and business and mer merchants and transactions cannot occur predictably. That's why the inner city in some of these wonderful American cities have just been destroyed. Because they've lost the uh, they've lost order, they've turned to chaos, and, uh, and that's a miniature version of it happening to an entire country. So, uh, I, I would instead have my money stateside uh, than than doing your your very first investment in ten percent or twenty percent of your whole net worth is going to be in a less predictable environment. That's a kind, easy way of saying it. So mm -hmm. you can do it if you want to, but I wouldn't. That's my reasoning. I wouldn't do it. Not no. You and I have both traveled all over the world. Yes. And it's easy to, when you're, when you're traveling, it's also easy as an American to say, okay, everywhere operates the same way. And it doesn't. No, it doesn't. And, and you kind of get enamored with these places. It's like, oh, what, this would be so nice. And you're so seeing. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Exactly. I, I just think that with real estate, especially, it sounds like he's a guy that hops around. He likes to travel. It just feels like not the move. I'm with you. I would invest stateside. It's an environment that you probably know a little bit more about. Not to mention his buddy, the banker, gave him the advice, which... No, he was meet, meeting with him later about Meeting with the banker. Okay, because yeah. I was like, I don't know if I yeah. let my banker tell me to invest I'm not going to let my buddy, my banker, tell me anything about investments. <laughs> okay. Bankers are where you deposit money, not yes. where you go for investment advice. That's right. So uh, anyway, th so that's the second part of the equation. You didn't ask, Carlos, but I would go to an actual professional broker that gives people advice not a banker mm -hmm. uh, there's a difference there's a substantial difference but the way their brains work so yeah if you want to find out who we recommend for that just click on smart vester at ramsey solutions and you'll find someone that is a professional that knows what they're doing mm -hmm. that um that it does investing for a living and works with uh, giving advice for a living and that kind of, and that's who i that's who I have in my corner and Jade has in her corner. Yeah. So, but, uh, so that's the second part of unsolicited advice here. So, well, he was on the right track wanting to pay cash. 
But, you know, that, that, yeah, he is. And, and that does parlay. I mean, I'll, I'll continue that conversation. Um, the, uh, I, I was thinking about this the other day. One of my buddies is all torqued out about all the anarchy stuff and all the, mm-hmm. the protests and people burning stuff down. And he was just, he's going nuts. His brain's, you know, he's all, he's all, he's spending way too much of his calories on it because it hasn't got anything to do with him, really. But, mm-hmm. but I, I was trying to explain to him, it's, it's not the, um, I mean, the weird thing about anarchy is if it works, you burn everything to the ground yeah. and there's nothing left. That's the purpose of anarchy is mm-hmm. chaos to destroy every known existing institution. OK. Mm-hmm. And so when you do that, 100 percent of the time, what happens after that? Another group of institutions rise up and they start ruling and the anarchists are now in charge of that. Mm hmm which is the actual paradox of anarchy. Yeah. So, I mean, and the problem with all of that idea is that in the process of doing that, you destroy, you know, what's happening on a miniature level, as I said, where you do not have a predictable environment of order mm. versus chaos. Mm-hmm. You cannot do business. So, in other words, let's just put it into basic terms. Uh, little couple has saved up money. They got 40000 bucks, and they want to open an ice cream shop. Okay. They are not, if they have wisdom, going to open an ice cream shop in an area that regularly kicks in the windows and steals right. everything because they're putting their stuff at risk, mm-hmm. right? And so if you want to make sure that your area has absolutely no business investment, which leads to prosperity because it leads to employment, if you want to make sure your area has that, then just remove order. And insert chaos because you will guarantee the failure of prosperity in the area because it's a natural thing for people to say, I'm not going to open my ice cream shop where people are going to burn it. Absolutely. I mean, it's silly, you know, and and some of these cities, the inner cities are not coming back after these riots. They're just sitting down there boarded up. And that's why, because people lost the belief that there was order. Mm-hmm. Instead, they have a belief that there's chaos. So when someone says law and order, sometimes people think, oh, well, that means the police are just kicking people and hitting people. And that, that isn't what it means at all. Mm. Law and order means that there's a law and order is kept mm-hmm. as opposed to chaos. And that's not a, a racial decision. That's not a defund the police decision. It's none of those things at all. It, it's simple that you cannot have economic prosperity in areas where you do not have a predictable environment. And so you've got to, and the same thing happens in your personal life. You have to create a predictable environment. So if all you and your wife, your husband do is fight all the time, very seldom are you going to prosper because you're in the middle of chaos all the time and you don't have a predictable environment. So it's very difficult to invest in, believe in, and pour your life into something called a future. Mm. Because all you're dealing, you're, you're burning all your calories dealing with the toxic mess that is in your house. And so it can be in your house, it can be in your town, it can be in your country. But order is essential to prosperity. Mm. And, and that, that's what I was trying to explain to my buddy who's drunk the Kool-Aid of some right-wing crazy butt stuff. But, um, you know, it's a very simple thing. And it's not a mean thing. And it's not really even a moral judgment. It's not a... Uh, uh, you know, well, what do we do about it? Yeah, what do you do about? But you got to have order. And if you don't have order, then you're not, by definition, ultimately going to have prosperity. I hear what you're saying, Dave. It has to be a predictable environment. And so that that's the thing. And investments, business investments, where jobs come from, uh, you're not going to have... The low couple's not going to open their ice cream store. And that just tells you what's happening. And so that's what's weird is if you burn your own neighborhood down, that's what you're doing to yourself. It is not just your, your it, 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 it's, it's just so illogical. I don't get it. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, Dr. John Deloney here. I'm a huge fan of both meditation and prayer. And good mental health includes slowing down, gaining control of your thoughts, and plugging into something bigger than you. 
and Hallow makes it easy to start a daily practice of meditation, prayer, and finding peace. Hallow is the number one Bible app in the world, and you can tailor content towards your faith tradition. From scripture readings and prayers to meditation and journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice prayer, meditate, and build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life and rediscover true peace. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today to get three months of Hallow for free. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Jade Washall, Ramsey personality, joins me today. Jay is in Boise, Idaho. Hi, Jay. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thank you so much. This is awesome to be on here. I appreciate the opportunity. Well, thank you. How um, can we help? So just to give a little preface, um, my company that I work for, they're awesome. They, uh, we had our trade leadership, the summit in April. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of how I started to learn about you guys. And then they offered to buy everyone FPU. If they wanted it, I'm course I dumped on my wife, and so we're in that right now. And so, anyway, we're I think week two or three right now. And um, I guess my question is: is I we have a student loan debt, a student loan, and a car loan that we're going to completely pay off in January, the car loan. But I also have a social impact business on the side, and so I'm trying to figure out. What, like, is there a way to kill two birds with one stone? Like, what's the smartest way to do that? Like, to make sure that I'm paying off my debt wisely, but also not leaving the, the my business um, stagnant. Does that make sense? Yes. I do think, okay, so you've got a job that you like and you've got this business on the side, right? So what right. percentage of your income, your personal income is coming from the job that you love and what percentage of the income is coming from your business? I would say 95% comes from my the job that I love and then All like right. 5% comes it's it's really Then I kind of think it's a little bit of a moot point, right? Because you've got this income here that you can easily use towards going towards your debt and the, you know, 5%, you know, like reinvested in your business or whatever, keep it going, but it's not as though you know, that business is your sole thing and you're ju- trying to decide, should I take this money out to help my feed my family or should I reinvest it? You've got the ability to kind of have that on the side, keep it going. And then you've got the ma- the vast, vast majority of your income to throw towards your debt snowball. What do you make? Mm-hmm. So I, with my current job, I make close to 70000 Then I also am a freelancer on the side with two clients that make me another 10000 a year. And then I have that business on the side. Which makes how much? Um, it's, let's see. It's not profitable. It's not, no, it's, it's profitable. It's just a very small amount of profit. Um, like a couple hundred bucks. Uh, and if, yeah, like I say a couple, like last year we made maybe three or four grand. This year we made maybe, maybe two grand. Um, so what it basically, sorry to give you a little preface on that. What it is, is I, I sell Polynesian design shirts to the mm-hmm. number one paid tourist attraction in Hawaii. Okay. And with that money, I pull out like 5 to 10% of that profit, but the rest of it, I'm using it to help Polynesian to um, achieve their dreams, basically. So, like, whether that's through a scholarship, that's through um, home ownership, things like that. But right now, obviously, it's so small. I've only been, in, be able, been able to endorse two or three people yeah. Yeah. Um, with their endeavors. Okay. Um, which has been great. Just leave that thing alone. Mm-hmm. Let it run okay. itself. Don't add to okay. it. Don't take anything out of it. Okay. And then go. Then go work your stuff. Now, how much is your car debt and your student loan debt? So my car debt is um, it is ten thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, and my my wife's student loan debt is uh, around thirty two thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, and in January. Well, we're gonna we're paying our car off enough to where I think by January we should have it down to maybe eighty five hundred, and there's an incentive bonus that I'm planning on getting from the company that'll wipe that out that car loan out. That's our plan to use that. 
Okay, Nine you need to pay off more than $1,500 worth of debt in six months. Okay. You need to gear this up. That's going to take forever. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you guys need to lean in. Let's get the, let's get a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, it, it'd be really fun if you could, like, have the car paid off by January. Really? Yeah, and then throw the 8500 at the student loan or something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. I, I want to gear this up, and that may be gearing up the freelance. It's certainly going to be gearing down some of your spending. Definitely. And right. uh, I, I really want to lean into this and get this stuff gone because you got forty two thousand dollars worth of debt. You make eighty, so if you want to yeah. be done in two years, you need to have to do twenty one thousand dollars a year. That's almost two thousand dollars a month, not two thousand dollars between now and Christmas. Mm-hmm. I, you can right. do that. You can do that. Right, I think I can do it too. No, I know you can do I it. We can do it. You you can do it. Yep, this is doable. You you can get there, Jay. And that that's that's how I do it. You just run your math out like that, and then it makes it believable. And once it's believable, then the hustle's worth it. That's right. The grind is worth it. The extra hours are worth it. But you got to believe it's going to something. It's not just a rat in a wheel anymore. Mm-hmm. Right? I got You got to feel the traction. You got to see the traction. And when you do that, then you'll go do anything. I mean, that's he and his wife. He making an additional $1,000 a, a month doing something. He's and his wife. Got- yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how much quickly, how much more quickly they could move. Yeah, I, I double the freelance. Yeah, and just let the let the uh, uh, we don't want the uh, social impact to to run out. Sure, but we also don't we're not trying to put a bunch of calories into it to run it up. That's right, right. now. We're, That's we right. let it just sit there and maintain, and then when you get this debt clear, you're going to be in a position to really lean into it and make it go. Yeah, that's right. That's good. Yeah, very good, Jay. Very cool. Hey, thanks for calling in, man. Mm-hmm. Stacy's with us in Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, Stacy. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you for having me. Sure, what's up? Um, I really appreciate your show. Um, I've only been a listener for a couple weeks now, and I'm obsessed with you guys. I think everything you have to say is awesome, and it totally applies to everyday life. But Thank you. Honestly, we appreciate well, that kind of obsession. <laughs> I, 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 yes, I am. I, I actually fall asleep at night to you in my ear. Oh, that, no, that, that, that's, that's, that's going level, too far. Though. That's going too far. <laughs> We it still love you, though. Dream. <laughs> um, I love the callers that call in that make 100000 That's what I keep hearing. I do hear some single moms call in, but I'm one of those. So, And I appreciate your podcast and all your information. I just, I was hoping maybe that you could give me some advice as a single parent because it's really hard to squeeze blood out of a turnip. You know, mm. yep. uh, I'm really trying. I'm actually, you know, looking into um, selling my house. And I, I've been here for 14 years, and I bought it for, you know, very cheap. And why why are you selling it? it? Um, I, I want something smaller mm-hmm. and more accessible, one floor, ranch type. Mm-hmm. But the how, neighborhood how old I bought it in is me. Oh gosh, I'm almost 48. And how many kids do you have? I have two. Two. What are their ages? 27 and 15. Okay. okay. So you want something smaller and accessible. You're downsizing preparation to be an empty nester. Yeah, and I was wanting to buy some land. It's kind of like been in my heart to buy land and maybe purchase a mobile home or build a no. small house on that land. No, no mobile no. homes. They go down in value. Um, what about the land? Land would be okay, but I'm confused. Is that Are we doing a house or are we doing land? Well, I'm kind of tired with this house, so I was thinking of land with a small house, like maybe building something really small on that land. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's nothing on fire here to do this. You can do it any time in the next three or four years, right? Yes. Okay. I mean, 15-year-old leaves home. It'd be nice to have it done. My house is double from what Zillow and whatever, whoever says it's double than what I bought it for. So what, would you, what would you take away from it? Um, at least a hundred grand. Okay. Okay. What do you make? I don't make much. So I'm a nurse. I do home care. I have my own home care business. I, that's another thing. I don't make much. So I'm kind of like, that's what I'm saying. Like drawing nothing. It's hard. Why don't you make much doing nurse home care? Well, I do. I charge my own rates, but it's still. What is your income? What do you pay taxes on? How much do you make? I make about 50 a year, okay. and I have to be there for my son. Yeah, he's older, but I have to be there because, you know, he's yeah. that age. I, I, I'm working. Why have you chosen hours. to make half what you can make? Well, that's part of the yeah. question I'm asking. What else can I do? I'm kind of stuck, I guess. Uh, I mean, it might not be uh, as 
flexible or it might not be exactly what you want to do, but nurses can make 80 to 100K and uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And so I, I'm going to start thinking about how I can go make some money to make this, some of these other dreams come true um, instead of, uh, yeah, you're, you're under, your income's under what you're, what you should be making for your uh, wonderful career field. Uh, and I think that would help you move some things along. This is The Ramsey Show. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us. Ashley is in Denver. Hi, Ashley. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. I really appreciate it. Sure. What's up? Uh, my husband and I are, are wanting to sell one of our side businesses, which is a vending machine business. Mm-hmm. And we are wondering if we should hire a business broker or what are our best options to try and sell this business? How many uh, machines have you got? Uh, about 30 locations, 30 machines, or okay. a little more. Um, What's it making? Like 30, 35 machines. Uh, this year, we are estimated to make 90K. Mm-hmm. Um, last year, it was like around 75. And then um, the year before that was about 65 to 70 um, post pandemic. But we profit about somewhere between 60 to 65. Cool. Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, you ever sold a business before? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, well, the uh, a business broker, a good one, would uh, bring two th- or three things for you. One is they're going to help you put an accurate value on it. Two is mm-hmm. uh, they're going to obviously have some potential clients, we hope, that they'll do, mm-hmm. bring to it. And three is they'll help you uh, do the paperwork a part of the transaction in a way that protects you and the buyer. Uh, if they're yeah, a good business broker. Concern. Now, the, I'm sorry? Okay. That was our biggest concern is the paperwork and verifying funds. Okay. Well, you can do all of that. Uh, probably less expensive with a basic attorney if you have an attorney that you use for things. that It's really not, a, it's really not rocket science to transfer the assets and, and to verify payment um, in escrow in order to do that. that. That's really not that big a deal. You think you, fi- you, think you find the buyer? Um, no, we don't have anybody. We're hoping to try it and sell this by the end of the year, but uh, we're just kind of in the, um, starting out stages of figuring mm-hmm. out what to do next. Mm-hmm. What's made you kind of, I'm just curious, what made you say, I want to, we're ready to sell this business. Um, we think it's kind of run its course. It was, it's been really great to us. Um, mm-hmm. but we also have a couple other side businesses plus my husband's, um, full-time job. Um, and it's just kind of, um, it is very labor intensive and um, takes a lot of our time. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just are kind of thinking it'd be nice to kind of unload it, basically. So um, you say you make a, a profit of, of 60. That doesn't count paying you labor. Uh, I mean, it's just me and my husband, so we don't really pay you it's labor. Just basically, the. You're, you're, in other words, the 60 is after cost of goods sold, but you didn't pay any labor out of that. Mm-mm. No. Okay. All right. So the way you value a business is you value it as a standalone business, not people working for free. Okay. okay. And so you know, by that, I mean an absentee investor. And so if I wanted to actually value it, I would say, what would it, and I wanted to buy it. I live in Tennessee and I wanted to have somebody run it. What would it cost me to hire somebody to run it and run the machines? Probably 30 or 40 grand, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that probably right? I don't know. How long? How many hours a week does it take to run it? Um, probably. I mean, depending on how many locations we have to do that week, it could only just about four or five. Well, I mean, average Through, throughout the yeah, month. Probably I'm sorry. Uh, probably about five hours a week. Okay, cool. Okay, then it's not thirty or forty k. 
It's part time. Okay. You, you you have somebody uh, as a part time. If you hired a part time employee to do all the work, what would you pay them? Do you think for five hours a week to go do this stuff? I mean, if you paid them really really good, you pay them a couple hundred bucks a week, right? Sure. So like, ten, <laughs> I'm sorry, my husband's the, the more numbers. Well, I mean, okay, I mean that would be <laughs> that, that would if you paid them twenty dollars an hour, that would be a hundred dollars for five hours, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, and if you doubled that, paid them forty dollars an hour, make it the best part-time job on the planet. Okay, right? <laughs> then you got two hundred dollars a week, and so eight hundred dollars a month is ten thousand dollars a year. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out if I wanted to hire somebody to do this, if I could find somebody trustworthy and pay them really good per hour, mm-hmm. but then uh, and then I, I trust them with the whole operation, and so let's call that ten thousand dollars. Okay, so if you made sixty and I pay labor out of it, now you got a fifty thousand dollar net worth. So you're our fifty thousand dollar net profit. So the way we value most businesses, and I'm not used to valuing particularly vending machine businesses, but basically a business is worth somewhere around four to five times its net profit after all real expenses are removed. So that means that this business is worth somewhere around 200 to 250. Does that sound like anything y'all been talking about? No. What'd you think it was worth? We We were thinking it was more or less like 70 or 80 K. Oh, really? Why? Where did you get that? (laughs) Uh, that's just kind of, um, in like the vending or at least what we had seen in the vending world, that's kind of what people have sold it for. Okay. One um, one times cash flow. Okay. Well, that might be, Mm -hmm. it might be what it's worth. I don't know. Um, and so, uh, but that, so there we go again. Do you want a business broker? So if you sell something for 70 K, what's the business broker going to get? 20% commission, 15% commission, whatever it is. That's, you know, is it worth uh, you and, know, 15, 10, 10 15,000 bucks for uh, them to help you value this properly and to do the paperwork and to help you find a buyer. I'm trying to see how this is worth it for you guys to sell. You should just, at, looking at these numbers, just hire someone to do the part that you don't want to do because you're the, you're in the position to profit and not do the work. You're just overseeing somebody trustworthy who you're going to pay $10,000 a year. That's kind of the problem. We're not quite sure who we could even figure out to hire. There's a lot of cash involved um, and things like that. Um, we mm. don't do just strictly credit cards, so it would be. So you're going to the someone. machines, picking up, getting all the cash. You've got all the coins and everything. Yep, hmm. I yeah. see. That's uh, interesting. I, well, okay. I, I'm going to. Add, I, I told you up front. I don't know how to value a vending machine business. I'm valuing a business in general. Mm-hmm. So I want you to do some more research. Um, rather than I just heard from some guy who sold a machine once, uh, I really want to find out what the standard is in mm-hmm. that industry. If it is only one-time cash flow, huh, that's not much. I'm ke- if it's one-time cash flow, I'm keeping it, and I'm hiring somebody. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. You but know? the uh, uh, but if you can get two times or three times, and the and it's the going different. rate is two times, but that say it. Let, let's pretend you accepted sixty thousand bucks for this business, and it was actually worth one twenty. Or two hundred. Mm-hmm. Well, they're a business broker would have paid for themselves, helping you properly value it. So call some business brokers to have some conversations and find out what it is they're going to get that makes them worth what you are paying them. And that's what it amounts to. That's good. Uh, that's if you want word. to value your own business, then you would search among friends in other cities, other people in the vending world, and try to learn what it's actually worth. I truly don't know. Mm-hmm. I've worked with a lot of different things with vending, a lot of different small businesses over the years. We work with tens of thousands of small businesses and entree leadership. But yeah. I, I ju- that's a standard valuation method. It's called a cap rate method that I was using, a capitalization rate. Mm-hmm. And so um, th- that's the process that most people use. Now, again, that might not be true of something that is like this small and something that is um, – has a route involved. I, I, that is true. Yeah. Truly don't know. But uh, it's only worth what it produces. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. worth what you paid for the machines. Mm-hmm. It's not, un, un, Unless they're worth more as machines than they are for what they produce. Yeah. And a key component to that that you brought out is if they're the only workers, even if they're not paying themselves, they still have to account for what someone would be paid to do that job. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So... I, 
if you look at it another way, I'm just staying on your idea of keeping it. I, I obviously they're not going to keep it, but you and I might. But um, <laughs> yeah. But the uh, I mean, what they make per hour mm -hmm. for their labor is incredible. Yeah. I mean, we're talking. They're making 150 bucks an hour. Yeah, she says it's only five hours a week. Yeah. So why is this killing you? I don't know. That's why I had more questions, but we maybe could have gone all day on that. Yeah. But it yeah. seemed like I think there's travel involved going. It's a route, right? They're going from place to place and you got all those coins. It's like a paper route only. Yeah. Back when there were papers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, now all this left are pamphlets. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. What's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about life and money. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Michael is in Seattle. Hey, Michael, how are you? Hey, I'm good, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Yeah, so um, I've, I've done the right things uh, my whole life financially. I actually discovered you guys once I was on a really formidable path and kind of in a good place. But being that a lot of the, the Ramsey values align with how I already felt, I started kind of watching some YouTube videos, whatever. It's and always good to find other story. people that are right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I, I like confirmation bias as well. So it's great. <laughs> but uh, so like long story short, I'm in a position now where I, 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 you know, all the big purchases are done and settled down and I kind of want to treat myself to a second car, a sports car. And it just feels um, a little wasteful just for the fact that I know that I could do better things. Uh, with my money, like just even leave it in, you know, an online savings account right now at four and a half percent. And, you know, that's still ticking up. Right. So mm -hmm. it just feels a little wasteful trying to figure out. And what's guys it do cost it all the time? Uh, the car would be like 80 after it's all said and done. What's your net worth? Uh, about one point three five. OK. What's your income? Uh, last year it was about four forty. OK. Get the car. <laughs> Get the car. <laughs> Treat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's kind of how I feel. Yes. But... Come on now. Okay. okay. Let me tell yeah, you what. Well, let me it... tell you the thing that Sharon and I do. Okay. Okay. Because it was hard for us to, after for so many years being frugal, for so many years, it was hard for us to make the transition to enjoy money. Okay. Yeah. And there's yeah. two things that have enabled us to do some things that feel in and air quotes wasteful uh but really what that means is i'm enjoying some money uh right. i've lived like no one else so now i can live and give like no one else there's two things that do that number one i look at my generosity and uh if i were buying an eighty thousand dollar car i know that in addition to our tithe to our local church we give way more than that so if i were buying yeah. an eighty thousand dollar car my generosity to wonderful ministries and to help the poor and to help whoever in different ways, whatever struggling group it is that we're trying to help, um, is way in excess of our enjoyment. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's one thing. In other words, am I, am I spending more on me than I am on others? Okay. That, that's, one, that's one thing that gives me peace about it, and I'm not, okay? The second thing that gives me peace about it, and this is probably even more important, is I call it the uh, burn it in the middle of the floor test. <laughs> if you put $80,000 in the middle of the floor 
and you set fire yeah. to it, would your life change? No. No. Yeah. So it passes the burn it in the middle of the floor test. <laughs> Okay. If you put eight hundred thousand in the middle of the floor and burned it, you would. Oh yeah, that, that your life would change. Yeah. So yeah, you can't do that. So there isn't. Right. There, you know that that that's where we. Are. Or if you have a hundred thousand dollars to your name, and you're going to take eighty thousand dollars and burn it, well, it changes your life, right? Yeah. So you don't pass the yeah. te- you don't burn the pass the burn it in the middle of the floor test and I never really named <laughs> I never really gave it a name until just now but that's I like that that's the, that's the that, I just named the test today but um <laughs> but the point is it, can, am I doing something that tells me on ra- I always look at ratios and, and the ratio of this car to your net worth and your income is small enough that Jade without thinking said. Bye! <laughs> right, and so, and that's that. Pass the right. bur- pass the the the, the ratio is so small that you're not doing something dumb. Yeah. When you reach a okay. point that it is impacting your life for a luxury item, or your lug or your generosity is smaller than your luxury item, then that doesn't pass the test. Yeah. So you have earned yeah. the right. You need to do this, and uh, and as long as our ratios are there, and we do this, uh, 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 Michael. In, in addition, we do this with our income because you make a fabulous income. You so do. this is a, a formula we use. Uh, I just got one of my uh, total money makeover royalty checks this week. Okay, I get them. Okay. I get them like four times a year. I get them quarterly, and uh, so that's like mailbox money, right? So any money like that above what we need to live, I just take that and I apply a formula to it. Uh, number one, the government gets 40%. Number two, uh, my tithe is 10%. So that's 50. That, that's 50 of it's gone. The other 50, I split among three categories, enjoyment, additional generosity beyond the tithe and investment, additional investment. And so okay. that check is already spent. There's a percentage yeah. that's going to go to enjoyment without guilt. Yeah. Because I'm doing the additional generosity and because I'm being responsible with the investing and, oh, I'm paying my taxes. There's <laughs> that. But, yeah, but the, you see what I'm doing? So, so the, that same formula or that same philosophy is applied in that formula. Do you feel it? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I, I think, you know, the transition to learning how to enjoy is tough for people who have been frugal. Mm-hmm. Their whole it is. Lives because it is. It's a new muscle. A positive asso- yeah, you, you get such a positive association with always saving money so that anytime true. you go to spend, it feels really weird and kind of foreign. And Michael, that is so true. Need, yeah, that, 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 that's a normal malady of somebody that's got $2 million. It's the first thing. And, you know, the first time I moved from a junk car after bankruptcy into a decent car, I went through this like, this is so dumb because these things go down in value. This is so irresponsible. And right. Blah, 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 exactly. Blah, blah. And, exactly. And I was buying a five-year-old Jaguar. It wasn't mm-hmm. like I was buying some super expensive car at the time. But my emotions were just you know, fingernails down a chalkboard because I'm not going, I'm not going to be broke again. I'm not going to be stupid again. I'm not going to back there. All this stuff in your head, you know? And so, uh, but yeah, that, that's kind of when I had to get, okay, if I burn this car up, am I okay? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Oh, so I'm not spending that much really. Okay. Mm. I can afford to do this. I can afford this upgrade. And you can do that with a lot of things. Um, and it'll keep you from doing too much luxury stuff, but, um, that's so yeah. good. I, I, I also think it's better money spent that we don't do a ton of extravagant travel. And I mean, a trip is lighted on fire. Once it's gone, it's gone. You're no longer in the destination. You no longer have the money. And so I always felt like the car too, although it, you know, depreciates, but if you take good care of it and don't drive it a whole ton, if, you know, if your goals and aspirations yeah. or your desires change in a few years, you can probably get out of it with you know, not too, too much damage. Which but you won't even need to get out of it. Too. Hey, I got a 1960 yeah. Corvette because I was being born in 1960 frame up restoration. It was and I drive it about eight times a year. I promise you, if I told my wife we're doing that instead of a trip, I would not own that car. <laughs> so you're, yeah, that rationalization won't work at Ramsey House. I'm just saying, because Sharon, Sharon's bags are packed to go on a trip. I'm just all the time. So yeah, but both both fall in the enjoyment category. Both are okay. Yeah. But they're a small percentage of your world. That's right. That's where you keep it, and then you don't have any reason to feel guilty, and that helps you to hit the enjoyment button. Buy the car. We didn't even ask it what it was. It doesn't matter. It he does gets matter. To buy I it. want to know what kind of car it is. Oh, yeah.
A Porsche 911? Was it? He told he told the phone screener. Oh, definitely get that car. This is the Ramsey Show. <laughs> It's a competitive home buying market, but there's a way you can get an edge. Churchill Mortgage works with you to understand your budget and your goals. And the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge offers you fast pre approval and a secured interest rate. Plus, Churchill has bumped up their seller guarantee to $10,000, giving your offer the best chance of being accepted and helping you win in today's market. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Jade Washall, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Jade has taught Financial Peace University many, many, many times. I don't know how many times you led a class. Ooh, probably about ten or more. Okay, I was going to guess higher than that. Okay. No. And you are doing a, a budgeting webinar using the Every Dollar app on August 9th next week, right? Yes, that is correct. Around lunchtime. And it's uh, not only how to do a budget, mm -hmm. the basics, but yes. also how in, important nuanced stuff like the irregular income. Like if you if you don't have a predictable income, how do you do a budget That's on right. the Every Dollar app, mm -hmm. and how do you do it properly? Jade's going to teach you. It's completely free. Yes, completely free. This is what you need. So many. Look, I know who I'm talking to right now. It's the folks who've been hanging out around our stuff. Dave and won't do it and yet. they haven't done it yet you're listening to the show you peruse the website and you think oh you know when the time is right I'll do it this is the time listen if you want entertainment watch Netflix okay if you want to change your life we'll entertain you while, oh, yeah. you, I'll, I'll while making you get the inner while making you not only be entertained <laughs> but making you do this freaking stuff so yeah. yeah you listen if you if you want to aim at nothing you'll hit it every time yep a budget is people telling their money what to do instead of wondering where it went. Zig Ziglar, John Maxwell quotes right there. Okay. So first webinar Jade is doing is next week. It is 100% free. No salesman will call other than Jade. That's She's right. going to be doing the every dollar showing you how to do an irregular income. And if you want to sign up for the webinar, go to everydollar.com slash budgeting everydollar.com slash budgeting if you don't know every dollar is the best budgeting app in the world mm -hmm. millions and millions of downloads of this app okay and it's called every dollar because the basics of a budget is giving every dollar a name every month before the month begins giving every dollar an assignment every dollar a mission mm -hmm. before the month begins and it's harder to do if you have an irregular income but it's not impossible if you have an unpredictable income and it can be done and jade can help you do it look the last webinar we did actually two webinars back because we're doing this regularly i had a single mom come on she had several kids and we walked through what she needed to do. She needed to uh, trade in her car for a less expensive car. She needed to move houses. She needed to get her income up. Don't you know she came on this last webinar just a couple of months later and she had done all those things completely really? cut Miosha, completely changed her life around, went from making her income. She more than doubled her income, Dave. Wow. This is what you can do when you get around the right community of people in a webinar like this with a tool like every dollar. That's all I'm saying. Everydollar.com slash budgeting. Sign up. It's going to be August the 9th will be the webinar. Obviously, webinars have limited spacing because the technology does not allow unlimited visitation. So you need to get over there, get signed up. And uh, again, zero cost. Everydollar.com slash budgeting. Jade's budgeting every dollar webinar, August the 9th. Laurie is in Minnesota. Hey, Laurie, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> sure, what's up? Well, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know even how where to start. I just know 
that I'm frustrated and I have um, some credit card debt that, you know, I, I come to find out I went and visited a bank yesterday. 27% interest is actually kind of, uh, I guess, normal right now, but I was Oof. livid because I used to, before a divorce, I used to, you know, get like the zero to three to 7% because I yeah. had pretty good credit and then I got a divorce and things just kind of hit the fan. And um, sorry. so it's just been a struggle. Um, How long have you been but, divorced? Well, a long time. Okay. <laughs> Seven, 17 years now almost. Well, oh. probably more like 16. Well, so, then right. the credit card is not the fault of the divorce. Okay, it's exactly. way too long. Right. we got to blame somebody right. else. Okay. Yeah, no, blame me. Right. Yep, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm okay. definitely. All right. How can we but help, though? It was necessities, you know, like yeah. a lot of it. You yeah. know, some of it was travel, you know, giving my son experiences. But again, I totally take accountability. That was kind of stupid. But I didn't realize it was going to get me in the prisoner yeah. of debt that I am, you know. How and much credit so, card debt do you have, hon? 27,000. 1,000 at 27% interest. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, it's awful. And, uh, I just a lot did of 20 the numbers. Cents. So how can mm-hmm. we best help you, do you think? Well, I don't know. I read your book, um, and then I was trying the Every Dollar app, and I, I get to my base bills. You know, I make um, approximately, just from my teaching job, I, I carry three jobs, well, four with my coaching. So um, summertime, I do two jobs. And, um, you know, after just the teaching, just the teaching salary during the school year, um, I, I make about 3000 and my base bills come to 2388 and that doesn't even include gas groceries, um, you know, like some of the medical co-pays, you know. Well, you said you had four like jobs. What do you, what do you make combined? Um, well, I think I make about, well, I think I make about 60 for teaching, about six to eight for the driving. Driver's ed was about two this year and coaching 3,000. So it's it's spread out throughout the year. It's not month. Right. It's not monthly. Okay. Yeah, well, right. 60 for teaching is not 3,000 take home. That's wrong. Uh, after union dues and medical and um, I'm contributing 50 a month. For um, and I was going to try to take that out because you say to not invest if you still have debt. I right. think right, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I was going to take that out, and I'm like, well, it's only fifty one dollars. Yeah. We'll take it anyway. Um, so the... my union dues are huge, and then we have TRA, which comes out, and that's like three hundred and sixty a month. What is that? TRA is like um, Teacher Retirement Association. Oh, you can't get out of that. Mandatory. Yeah. Mandatory. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Right. Right. Okay, and so, your and your union dues are ridiculous too, right? Uh, well, yep. Every other, er, every paycheck, there's sixty bucks. Yeah. Sheesh. Thanks to the teachers' mm-hmm. union. Okay. <laughs> Salute. Um, and I, I tried the every dollar. What and was I, your tax re- teaching- what, Still, what was your tax refund? Um, I, I paid in. <laughs> okay. So six hundred something. Mm-hmm. But that's because I screwed up. I had to take, I, I not screwed up. I intentionally um, reduced my, or increased my exemption so I could make it through Christmas and then through a couple things during the year. And so that was my own fault. I knew I was going to have to pay in. So usually it's about a thousand. Do you have kids? I yes, do. One. Yeah. One. What okay. age? Mm-hmm. Uh, what? 17. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. You're going to have to get your income up. That's <laughs> That's all it is Add to one it. more job in there. <laughs> I, well, the, here's the thing. And here's what I want you to look for. Instead of something seasonal, mm-hmm. I want you to look for something that you're bringing in a steady amount of money each month because mm-hmm. that's going to that's gonna give you a world of peace right now. Because like you said, having, you know, if your expenses are coming to 2800 and you got, mm-hmm. you're only earning 3000 that margin is too, too slim. You're not going to be able to pay anything off that way. And you're going to be frustrated. <laughs> exactly. It, right. But what so, I'm... T- but- how do you leave teaching? I mean, I'm not, you know, well, I'm not necessarily hmm. saying that you have to leave teaching. If you choose to do that, right. that's fine. But uh-huh. you, either way, you're going to have to get another gig that's pulling in more money, whether it's uh, okay. yeah. tutoring, tutoring. Yeah. Something you're doing uh, on the side. Thing. Yeah. But yeah. again, yeah. for clarity, I want you to look for something, not driver's ed in the fall and not coaching volleyball in the spring. I want you to, that's good, but I want you to do something that you're getting money week to week steadily so that you can continue to make steady efforts toward this okay. debt. Yeah. 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 And even if it's three years to get out, do the debt free screen. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. Look, okay. that's yeah. worth it. Yeah, and yeah, I, and totally. I'm thinking driver's ed and coach and volleyball does not pay as much as tutoring. No, am I wrong? Um, no, right, you're yeah, correct. Yeah. <laughs> I make 
But yeah, and yeah. And so you might lot, trade, you might trade that in for do, something else. I do do after school tutoring as well. <laughs> so yeah. when volleyball's done, I do do uh, after school tutoring. What do you get? How so. much are you getting for that? Uh, it's about thirty an hour. I yeah, think. I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what I usually hear is thirty yeah. to fifty an hour is what people are getting these days. Right. So, right. You know. Yeah, that mm-hmm. I think I'd concentrate and double down on that. Let's grow a real tutoring business. Right, right, okay. And okay. Get, and and use that to get rid of the $27,000. Because yeah. if you can make $2,000 a month doing that, the, the mm-hmm. credit, that card, the credit card's gone in a year. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, okay. And that starts to get you in there. So that, that's to Jade's point. Yeah. So what we're always looking at, Laurie, is what we call the shovel-to-hole ratio. How big a hole have you got versus how big is your shovel? Mm-hmm. Your shovel is your income. Your hole is your amount of debt. And so what Jade saw was you had a fairly small hole but a tiny little shovel. Mm -hmm. And so all we're trying to do is get the shovel up. That's the whole thing. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to save up to 40% off everything site-wide. Go to Blinds.com for more information. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. All month long, we're giving away cash. You could win one of our $500 weekly prizes or the grand prize of $3,000. To increase your chances, enter daily at RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway. Uh, You can also get our best-selling books like The Total Money Makeover, From Paycheck to Purpose, John Deloney's number one bestseller, Own Your Past, Change Your Future for as low as $12. That's a deal. Mm -hmm. You can pre-order Dr. John Deloney's brand new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life. comes out October 2nd, but if you pre-order it for $20 right now, you get $75 in free bonus items. Wow. On top of the $20 book. There you go. So all questions for human cards, conversations cards are on sale right now. $12 as well. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash store. That's RamseySolutions.com slash store. Jade Washaw is with me this hour. The phone number is 888 Lynn is in Los Angeles. Hi, Lynn. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. I am 50, I'm 59. Um, on the 10th, I'll be 59 and a half. And I have a TSP that has a little over $200,000 in it, plus an IRA that has, um, I mean, a Roth that has 10000 in it and about five in my savings. I want to pay off, like, my car and a few other small bills, and I'm wondering if this is the time for me to take out from my TSP, or should I wait? What's the total debt? The total debt, uh, my car is 21000 Then I have a personal loan for 7000 
and credit card probably about fifteen hundred. Okay, so thirty k, and in order to get that, mm-hmm. you're going to need to pull out forty five. So you're going to have one hundred fifty k left. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then if you go borrow again, you kind of screwed this up, didn't you? Right. So part of this formula is never again. Next time you want a car, you pay cash for it or you don't buy it. Okay. Next time you want a dot, 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 whatever the crud you spent this money on, because you, you keep doing this, you're going to have no TSP left, right? Right. So the problem is pay all this off with no pain without feeling the pain of the stupid decisions that got you here. And then you mm-hmm. go back because you don't change your habits. This would be really bad advice. If you are, if you can raise your right hand and swear to yourself, I'm never doing this again, then it does make sense. Does that, is this logical? Yes. Hey, very logical. Hey, Lynn, why can't we just keep working and pay off this debt? We can do that as well. Um, I retired in 2020 from the post office. Okay. But I, I am now a part-time preschool teacher. Okay. Um, so, but I, I'm also a caregiver for my dad. So oh, okay. my work schedule is kind of, you know, we wonky depending on his health. Are mm-hmm. you married? Yes. I What's am your married. husband, Mike? My husband is on temporary disability, so he brings in about 2500 a month. And what is his nest egg? He doesn't have one. Okay. So this is your whole household's nest egg? Correct. And he keeps wanting me to pull it out and put it in the bank. No. But no, I I, I know that. <laughs> That's, oh, this is that. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that one. Okay. Um, okay. What's uh, what's your mortgage? I don't have a mortgage. We rent, and our rent is eighteen hundred a month. Okay. I want to buy a home, but I don't think I'm in a position right now to do that to myself. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, th- I think the two of you combining your efforts and you, as you're able to not, uh, to Jade's point, go back to earning an income, uh, and the more substantial income, better, because, um, uh, yes, you're debt free when we do this, but debt free is supposed to lead you then to the ability to build wealth. Mm-hmm. And okay. if, if you don't take all these payments you used to pay, by getting rid of the debt and any and, and, a, and a good income and you use it to build wealth and good investments. If I thought you could double or triple your nest egg by the time you're 70, uh, because you got rid of this debt, I'd be a whole lot more excited about it. That's what I'm thinking about for your sake. Uh-huh. That, does you see what I'm doing? Yes. So getting out of debt is one thing, but getting out of debt so that it's so that so that I can be more generous, so that I can uh, invest more, so that I've got more freedom. That there's a it, it, the the debt for the debt free part is just a is is just a it's a, a an exit ramp we take to get off and go do something better. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering, and I might be wrong. I feel like she retired a little too early or are you yeah. re- are you required yeah. to go out at a certain point when you no. work for a government job or? no you're not 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 the post office but anyway but yeah but it's too late there she's gone so yeah, she can't go I, back i just I, but i would look at what i can do for my second career yeah because you're young you got a lot of time left and um i i would you know she's got a caretaking with her father issue yeah. and uh and her husband's on disability so i don't know what all's going on there but but i'm gonna uh do some things to really and preschool doesn't sound preschool teacher doesn't sound um, like a high, high paying job yeah. to me. I could be wrong. Well, she's part time doing it, too. So I wonder yeah. if there's there, so, there is there is something that yeah. she can do to earn more money. There's and, always and something. there certainly is over the next three or four or five years. That's right. Yeah. You know, so let's just keep that going and try to figure out what we can do there. So good question. Mm-hmm. Zachary's with us in uh, Minnesota. Hi, Zachary. Welcome to the Ramsey show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, so, uh, about a year ago, I was very financially illiterate, and I have a question about a car loan at a very high interest rate. Mm-hmm. So, 
It is uh, 15.4%. I Good owe Lord. 11 11 and a half thousand dollars left on it. Mm-hmm. I've uh, completed reading your total money makeover book and I've started the baby steps and mm-hmm. this is my only actual debt. And I'm wondering if it's worth holding on to and just aggressively attacking it or should I just sell it by a car with the equity that I have in it and then have no payments and start there. What's it worth? It is worth estimated private. It's it's sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars. What do you make? Uh, I work at the post office, and I make last year my gross taxable income. I was sixty two thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Or yeah, yeah, sixty two thousand. I'm on pace to do a little bit better this year, and I'm supposed to get a raise, a decent raise, in uh, November. What lucrative side job could you pick up and knock this thing out before Christmas? Currently, I am doing in my off time. I work about 50 hours a week at the post office. And then um, I've been doing some Instacart and then some door dashing. uh, And that's brought me up to, I don't know, I've only done it for like two weeks now. I think I'm at like $500 roughly off of that. So you you pay the car off by Christmas? That's that's the goal, yeah. and I, I thought that it'd be worth holding on to because it's got really low miles, and mm-hmm. but it's a terrible mm-hmm. interest rate. Yeah, it's a terrible interest rate. Yeah, that's why you're going to have to go fast as lightning to pay this off. And I mean, honestly, you could go either way if you wanted to sell it and get some cash and I'm go a, to a cash car, but I would just probably keep it and pay it off. I agree. I agree. I would keep it and pay it off. It's Because it's a small enough amount, you can do it fast enough with your income and with mm-hmm. your side hustle, and just bust it, man. Just bust it. And turn turn, okay. turn turn the thermostat down and, you know, turn the grocery bill down, turn everything down at home. No life, no eating out, no partying, all work, no play. Get rid of the mess, right? Mm-hmm. Right, sir. I do have a two-year-old, and that is my number one priority, and I've been trying to, like, navigate around. I am cutting my budget up. Um, I'm not. I well, you have to feed the two-year-old. Right, exactly. Exactly. But you can work like a maniac for a short period of time to get rid of the problem. That's right. That's the why right there. Yeah, that's it. Hey, man, thanks for the call. This is The Ramsey Show. Shaw Ramsey personality is my co-host today. I'm Dave Ramsey. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey guys, if you like what you're hearing, we could use your help. Subscribe to the show. Click the follow button. Leave a five star review. Uh, share. Hit the share button or tell someone where you're listening or click a link and copy it and send it to somebody. Say, hey, check this out. Uh, all of those things help pretty dramatically. We appreciate it. Uh, this week we hit number 12 on Apple, and which means out of uh, about 4 million podcasts that are done in the world, we are number 12. And you guys are the reason. Thank you. We appreciate that very, very much. And that helps a bunch because when you pull up podcast and the first line is six mm-hmm. and the next line is six, we're right there. It makes a difference on new people learning about us and finding us. It's a big deal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. And um, we know this is free. And so that's what we're going to charge you. You got to help us. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Christina is in Milwaukee. Christina, what's up? Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? Um, yeah, I have uh, a question. So my husband and I have been uh, working towards paying down our debt the last four or five years and uh, have about 69000 remaining in student loans. Um, and we're just contemplating the idea of selling our home. Um, so, And there's a lot of nuances there. <laughs> um, but yeah. How much debt have I you paid so far? So we have paid 37000 to my private um student loan so that is gone uh we paid fifteen thousand 
plus to credit card, about 20000 to the vehicles. Um, yeah, and then there's been a lot of, both of those vehicles have had significant maintenance. So $70,000 in three years. Yeah, four, four years, yeah. Mm-hmm. What is your household income? Um, so now we both just gotten actually new position. So I uh, will be starting on Monday actually at 140, and my husband is right around 70. What were you all making before? Uh, when I started, program around, I mean, like during this I mean, four it, years, it took you to pay 70, which is pretty lame. <laughs> Sorry. What were you all so making at, then? <laughs> 65, and he was more like 55. Okay, well, that's, that's a little better. I, okay, all right, I won't, yeah. I won't be so tough on you then. Okay. <laughs> so, so the good I'm news is, like so, so listen, you doubled your income. Yes, yes. Way to go. Mm-hmm. Rock star. Way to go. So just don't spend any of it and pay off all the debt this year. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you want to sell your house? Well, so our house has about this $265,000 loan and probably get about 420 or so for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we also know with vehicles that both of them are a little bit older. One for sure. Well, you know, we're working on trying Christina, to... Christina, why do you want to sell your house? I don't. I really don't. Okay, then don't sell it. <laughs> but I, but the, the, just, the, just having... The no, you just doubled your income. One year, yeah. you're debt-free. One mm-hmm. year. You increased a hundred thousand dollars in income, and you may you only have sixty nine thousand dollars in student loan debt left, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And, and then after that, you can buy whatever car you want to buy with cash. Okay. You have an extra hundred grand that you didn't have before. Yeah. Unless I did the math wrong, did I do it wrong? <laughs> well, it doesn't feel that way because it's been progressive. I don't care how it feels; it's math. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, so yeah. you you yeah. made one ten before. And now you're making two ten. That's an extra hundred grand, right? Yes. yes. Okay. And so, why would you not be if if making one ten, you were able to pay off seventy in four years, making two ten, you ought to be able to pay off seventy in one year. Yeah. Sure. It's illogical. Yeah. What's wrong? Why 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 are you not believing me? I think you're. I think you're tired. I think I am tired. You're tired, and you're like, man, this is what's happening. And tell me if I'm wrong. But you're looking ahead, and you're going, man, another year of putting all of our income onto this debt, and then after that, we're gonna have to save for his car, and then after that, we're gonna have to save for my car. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to. It's hard to because our income was less before too. It's hard to like envision right. being able to obtain cash for those. Bigger, so we have six in our family. My mom also lives with us because she had some medical issues the last couple of years, mm-hmm. and so we need bigger vehicles. And we both need a vehicle, even though I work remotely because we have lots of appointments. I think what you're doing is you're still seeing it through the the f- the goggles of your old income, and it's like oh, everything yeah. is taking forever. But like Dave said, you got a hundred grand more. Things are going to go at double the speed that they were going. New, you got some new goggles. That's right. You got new goggles. Yeah. Girl, <laughs> okay. Put on those two hundred and ten thousand dollar goggles and start looking at this equation, and you're going to see that you're going to move so much quicker, and it's not going to be the slog that you think it's going to be. Yeah. So, Christina, I um, in a, in a few years back, I quit, but I ran a bunch of half marathons. I've run like twenty half marathons. This thirteen miles, mm-hmm. okay, and somewhere around mile nine. Every time I run it, I question my sanity. (laughs) My body is tired and my mind is tireder. The nutrition, the water runs out, the energy, the excitement, the blood sugar runs out, and and you just have to freaking finish the race. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it doesn't and matter what song plays on the podcast it, there's nothing in your ears there's nobody yeah. cheering on the side you just want to hit them get out of the way <laughs> shut up leave me alone you turn into a grouch for the mm-hmm. last the last section of it and you're in that last section and the good news is there is a yellow tape around the corner and you're going to run through it and there's a finish line and this will be done i'm proud of you you've done better than you feel like you've mm-hmm. done dominic is in delaware hi dominic how are you Hey, Dave. How are you? Great, man. How can we help? 
Great. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, so basically for the past year, I've been living uh, with my girlfriend at her mom's house. Um, we've been working, you know, our, both of our salary jobs and then an extra job on the side, um, saving as much as we can. And now we've gotten to the point where I think we have enough to kind of, you know, buy our first home. And, oh, no, 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 uh, no, no, no. Don't do that. No? No, never buy a house with someone you're not married to. Okay. Under any circumstances. You're about to get yourself in a huge mess. Yeah, you complicate the breakup like nothing, like nobody's business. Mm-hmm. You're going to buy a house with her, you better put a ring on it first, buddy. I know, that's right. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the first the, the thing, right? Because we've been, we've been together for about six years now. And come, well, on, then, come on, come on. Then paint her, get off the ladder, man. I know, come that's on. right. Beyonce <laughs> yeah, know, taught us better than cool. that. Put a ring on it. I know, I know, I know. But it's like, I don't, because if we get married right now, you know, that's, you know, a lot of money that we got to spend on the wedding and the, and the You're ring. You're buying a house. And, uh, I know. You're I'm already sleeping together. Wait I a second. Hold on, hold on. Purchase. You're okay. in her mother's house. You're talking about buying a house, but you're concerned about buying a ring. Let's look at no, this. No, no. No, the wedding. No, what I'm concerned so, about is using a lot of money on the wedding and all that. You don't have to use a lot of money on the wedding. Dominic, please don't okay. buy a house with someone you're not married to. Really. Okay. I've been doing this 30 years. And I've heard unbelievable horror stories because you now have a partner. You have no protection under the law. This is relationally backwards. It's uh, legally dumb and it's financially stupid. And everybody thinks it's all okay because if we're going to play house, we ought to have a house to play house. Listen, dude, get married and then buy the house. I don't care if you have to put off buying the house a little bit because Mm -hmm. you bought too expensive a wedding. I don't care if you have an inexpensive wedding and go buy the house anyway, but do this in the right order, please. Mm -hmm. I don't want your marriage doomed and I don't want your finances doomed. And doing this out of order is it's just suicide, man. Don't do it, please. if, If he's truly concerned about the price of the wedding, get married at the courthouse and do a party later after you got your house like it doesn't have to be all that yeah, just it, do it right legally yeah you're just gonna get you just it's you, you yeah. can't get out of the house mm-hmm. there's no i mean when you go through a divorce the judge tells you what you have to do yeah when your girlfriend leaves Ooh. and you got the whole mortgage and she, her name's still on it and you can't find her to get the mm-hmm. deed signed because she got remarried somewhere or got yeah. married to somebody else somewhere and now we're trying to get rid of the house. It's a dadgum nightmare. Don't do that, people. Mm-hmm. Get yourself in a mess. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving in storage studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Liz is in Boston. Hi, Liz. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, yeah, so I'm calling um, with sort of, it's two questions that kind of go into one. So um, I'm getting $4,000 back on our tax return. And I'm going to pay off a credit card with that. And I have another credit card that I do need to pay off. But I also have a small business. And I was wondering what your thoughts are on putting that money toward, um, as an investment into my small business. Um, I have a food blog. So I was thinking of doing a website audit to see if I could increase my website traffic um, you know, to make more money off of ads and things like that. 
And um, to go along with that question, I am a stay-at-home mom, and I guess I'm just wondering if um, I, I guess I'm just wondering if I'm doing the right thing being a stay-at-home mom. Um, I left my job as a physical therapy assistant um, three years ago, and I have two children under the age of two. Um, I work ten hours a week, um, actually, from my website host, and then my food bought on the side, and I just wasn't sure if I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> okay, what do you make on the 10 hours a week? 35 an hour. Okay, so 350 bucks. Okay, and then what are you making yeah. on the food block? Not a lot. Um, I It comes out to, some months it'll be about $400 because I do food photography for that on the side, mm-hmm. and then um, some months it's, you know, close to like 50 Okay, no, you do not put $4,000 into that. Okay. Take you forever to get it back. Yeah. You're not making enough to justify a $4,000 investment. You're making enough to justify a $400 investment. Yeah. Yeah, it would be, it would end up being 1800 It's too much. Okay. I'm also going to poke a larger bear here. You said you're a stay-at-home mom. I'm assuming you're married? Yes. What's he make? Um, this year it'll end up being about 240. Okay. So what's the problem? Yeah. I I think I know what the problem is because you're saying these are your, your tax return, your credit cards. You guys don't have your money combined? No, we don't. Um, we do in a sense that, um, he pays all of the bills and I pay my student loans and my credit cards. Um, yeah. So you're not combined. No, <laughs> we do have a we do have a joint account. Um, you're not combined, but, dear. I know what yeah. you're saying. I know you want it to sound better than what it is, but you're not combined. But I hear from your voice that maybe you would like to be. Yeah, um, I think it would be a little less stressful. Um, yeah. Okay, so let me. Uh, here's the thing. This man has a wife. And two babies. His job is not to make his wife pay her student loans so she can take care of the two children that he sired. Mm. That's bull crap. All right. So the two of you should put all of your money in a pile and the two of you should take care of the two of you for sickness and sickness and in health for richer, for poorer and the old wedding vows back in the day the old book of common prayer wedding vows say unto thee all my worldly goods i pledge you're good enough to have babies with but not good enough to have your student loans taken care of bull crap yeah you took him if he gets sick you're going to make him chicken soup and you got student loans so we have two children. We have student loans. We made the decision for you to be a stay-at-home mom because that's what you wanted to do. And you're fretting over $1,800 and $1,500 while your husband makes a quarter of a million dollars a year. Have Bull you, crap. Have you brought this up to him before that it would be a lot less stressful if you guys could just combine your money? Um. Yeah, It's it has been a conversation. It was never like really um stressed like i never really um tried to make it like a big point um i guess i feel guilty he has no debt and i have like no he married you yeah oh you you come with all of you you married him he doesn't. He didn't walk around feeling guilty about being selfish. No, he you doesn't. You don't need to walk around feeling guilty about dadgum student loans. I'm not Y'all, gonna look. This, I'm not gonna. I'm catching a vibe here that I don't like at all. And Dave is right. That's all I can say. I don't want to jump to any conclusions. I'm catching a vibe I don't like. I don't like that you have all this guilt surrounding a simple request. I don't like that you are feeling so much apprehension about having this conversation with this man that you're married to and have three kids with. So there's a lot going on here. Um, yeah. If you're good enough, going on if here. you're good enough to have babies with, you're good enough to combine finances with. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. I, I mean, I, I think he would be open to it. Good, um, good. That would speak highly I, of him. I, mm-hmm. I, I would think better of him than I do at this moment. <laughs> I, would, I would, too. Yeah, I would, I think, too. I, cause yeah. I, think, I think you guys are just plowing along and hadn't stopped and looked at this, maybe. So let's stop and look at it, because yeah. here's the thing. You're fretting over stuff that you're, you guys ought to just write a check and pay these loans off. Okay. I, I, I'm guessing you got the money in the bank. And you ought to clear them up. It's not up to you to do it by yourself any more than it's up to you to feed the children by yourself. Or it's up to you to uh, do everything by yourself. It's not up to him to do everything by himself. Mm-hmm. Okay? So we, we are a team. That's what we said when we went to the altar. We are a team. We are a team. We are a team. We both have a vote. And we both bring strengths and we both bring weaknesses to the team. We are a team. We are a team. We are a team. And let me just tell you, the people that build the highest quality marriages with the highest probability of extreme prosperity, meaning building wealth and becoming Baby Steps millionaires, all the data points to they work together and they combine their finances. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to be independent. Well, you shouldn't have gotten married. Because when you get married, by definition, you are not independent anymore. You don't have to lose your personal identity. Right. And and this is not some kind of 1950s thing I'm talking about here. I'm giving you fresh data from the marketplace that says, folks, you need to combine your finances if you're willing to combine your bed. It's not any more than that. I mean, in terms of being married. Okay. So it's time. It's time. You can have babies together. You can pay off finances. You can pay off student loans together. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Our question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. When you need help getting your home ready for spring, go to Neighborly.com to find reliable local businesses like AirServe, Window Genie, The Ground Skies, and more. Visit Neighborly.com today and find home experts available near you. All right, today's question comes from Leo in Washington. He says, I'm 83 years old and I want to know how to set up my inheritance for my children and grandchildren grandchildren. I don't want to give them the money that is scribbled away. I want to get, I don't want to give them money that, okay, I see what he's saying. He doesn't want them to get this money and just blow it, blow it. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of details I wish were here. Obviously, uh, you're going to either need a will or an estate plan or a combination of, of both depending. Um, if you've got, you know, a net worth, over millions of dollars and it's a lot of money, then you're probably going to want something like an estate plan to really put everything in there and decide over time what happens to it. Um, If it's just a couple of possessions and a little bit of money, he might be okay with just a will. Um, But there's probably more to it that you're going to want to walk through. Uh, You're going to want to make sure that you know, there's a power of attorney set up for your medical stuff, for your financial stuff. You're really going to want to walk through that estate planning uh, situation. You know, Dave, if, if you're just a guy, you know, you, you got a couple hundred thousand dollars, you've got a couple possessions. Is it worth going through the process of doing an estate plan? Or would you just say, yeah, 
I put it in your to, will. I would go to Mama Bear Legal Forms and do a will. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of how to decide whether you're going. Number one, we need to start with the premise that just because someone is kin to you does not mean they're entitled to an inheritance. Okay. So I'll give you an extreme example. One of your grandkids is doing heroin. If you leave them money, you will kill them. Mm-hmm. Because they will they will use it to overdose, right? So we do not you do not they're they're not automatically entitled to money just because they're in your lineage, uh, and so you have a responsibility to them and to God to manage this money well, and so we're going to leave it to people who are going to handle money well, and are handling their life well, because when you get more money, whoever you are, me included. You become more of what you already are. If you're a jerk and you get money, you become a colossal jerk. If you're a drug addict and you get money, you die of an overdose. Mm -hmm. If you have an anger problem and you get money, you're a rageaholic. You're a well-financed butt. And so, you know, and so on, right? And so if, you, if you're sloppy with money and you get money, it doesn't suddenly make you not sloppy with money. It makes you sloppier. That's right. So you're not blessing someone who has... Uh, behavior problems, we'll call them, by giving them money. As a matter of fact, you are blessing them by not financing that. Yeah. And have that conversation. Have yep. those conversations yep. open and in the in open. Don't make it like yep. some big secret of... So I'm going to sit down with the grandkids. Yeah. And if you want to put them all in a pile, that's fine. If you want to do it one at a time, that's fine. And go, listen, those of you that handle money well will be getting money. Those of you that don't handle money well will be getting a salute. I love you. <laughs> but I am not. Get, matter of fact, I love you so much. I'm not going to finance your misbehavior. And so grandpa's watching. It's that simple. Hey, say you've got. OK, say your kids are fine and you want to split up this money. And this is the other thing. You can't be mad if everybody doesn't get the same amount. No. Like, go ahead and tell them. Hey, let me just tell you. Fair is where the tilt a whirl and the cotton candy is. <laughs> there is no fair. OK. Yeah. Even Jesus didn't split it evenly. Check True the that. parable of the True talents. That. True that. The parable of the talents. Who got more money? The one who managed it well. Parable mm -hmm. of the talents. Read it. So this is biblical. So I, I, you know, I'm looking at my grandkids and go, "Don't be mad at me. God said it." Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Here's the. And no, I'm kidding. But I'll take the blame because here's the thing. I am not going to finance your misbehavior. I love you too much to be an enabler. Mm -hmm. Enablers mm -hmm. are weak people pleasers, and I'm not one. So this is how I talk to my kids now. Yeah. I mean, as weird as it sounds, we do an estate planning meeting once a year where all the family is there, and the leadership <laughs> team at Ramsey is there, and we talk about what happens this year if Dave dies. As a matter of fact, that meeting is today. Was it today? I, it's, it is going to be later today. I am dreading it. It's the Monty Python meeting. Are you it's, feeling just yeah, fine? <laughs> I'm feeling much better. It's feeling just a flesh better. wound. We're planning my death all the time, right? So <laughs> So, yeah, but, but, but this has been for years. I mean, the starting point of our thing is, as for me and my house, we're going mm -hmm. to serve the Lord. And if you want to, if you're going to do that, then you're, then you're going to get financed to do that through the, the blessings that God has given us. But I am going to make sure if you're misbehaving, that God's money is not financing it. And dad's money is not financing it because both of you love, both of us love you too much to finance your misbehavior Amen. and encourage your misbehavior. And the misbehavior can simply be laziness. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't like to work much. Not financing that. Why? Because it's not good for you. It's not sustainable. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's not. It's yeah. not good. It's not. It doesn't bring joy in your life. Industry right. and diligence brings joy in your life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Creating things and accomplishing things brings joy to your life. Sitting around and being really good at an at a game on the television does not bring joy to your life. I know you think it does, but it, you're just numbing your mind. It's brain candy. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got to do something with your life. And so, Grandpa, that's a fair thing to do. And so it's a fair thing to leave... You know, if you want to leave, a t I'm going to leave you $5,000 and all that is, is I say, I love you. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, but your sister gets a hundred thousand dollars because your sister's actually got a brain and is using it. Yeah. You know, tactically, qu tactical question. Okay. Grandpa's passing away. He's leaving the grandchildren mm -hmm. 30, $40,000 each in the will. Mm -hmm. Does he need, uh, it, it, that money effectively would go to, to them immediately if it were in a will. Mm-hmm. 
If they're minors, I would leave it in a truck. Yeah, so that was if that was the if tactical not, part. If, if the grandchildren are not minors, then I would just leave it to them. Yeah, I think that's the tactical part that people miss. If you've got minors involved, whether it's your own children or grandchildren, that trust lets you decide when they get the money, as exactly. opposed to it happening right well, when if you, you pass. Want, if you want to keep somebody from getting it until they're 30 or something like that, you need a trust too. Yeah. But I, you know, again, it depends on the amounts and how complicated and how complex you want to get into this. Yeah. But let's start with the premise of two things. Number one, no one is entitled to money. Mm-hmm. No. You know, Show well, I, you know so I've, I've met uh, people who felt like their parents or their grandparents owed them yeah. their inheritance or that they were entitled to that inheritance. And you're just not. That's not ethically, morally, legally, spiritually correct. It's just wrong. Okay. Yeah. Number two, so you don't, you're not required to leave money to someone. So get off the shame train. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the second thing is, is you need to really understand with all money transactions, you are not helping people when you give people that are misbehaving money. You are financing a larger portion of that misbehavior. Oh, 100%. 100% of the time you're magnifying. So you're, people don't get, you know, it's like marriages don't get better. You know, where our marriage is struggling, so we had a kid. Well, that was a dumb butt mm-hmm. idea. That mm-hmm. doesn't help your marriage. Yeah. Okay. It just means you're not sleeping. That's all that means. So, I mean, gosh. And you so, might have to consider your kid's spouse. Do yeah. you consider the spouse yeah. as well? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So if I have, if one of my kids has an overbearing spouse mm-hmm. that is, is going to inflict values that I don't believe upon the wealth that I leave, then mm-hmm. I'm not leaving it. Yeah. Ooh, and you got to tell, you got to let them know that. Oh, that, I that's talk why. about it. We talk about it all the time. We'll be talking about it tonight. I mean, we do, we, we review this every year. We go through it and, the, you know, we go through, this is what's going to happen with this. This is what's going to happen with that. This is where it's going. This is what yeah. we're doing. And, you know, and, and everybody gets an opportunity to have their feelings hurt every year. You know what I mean? You know, so. <laughs> I can't imagine there's any drama in that room. Dave. You know, there, there really isn't. I, that's what I'm saying. I can't imagine. There, there really is. isn't. It's really kind of boring. Yeah. But, yeah, but, but at least we review it. And it's, that's an act of diligence. It's an yeah. act of love on my part. So Sharon says, this is what's happening. That's what's happening. Sharon knows she's taking care of. Mm-hmm. Kids know how ra- they're getting Ramsey. They know how they're going to run Ramsey this year. If something happens to me, mm-hmm. uh, the milk truck hits me. Well, you know, that, the proverbial milk truck. That poor milk truck driver. No, I, I, if that milk truck comes for you, I'm coming for it, Dave. Oh, Nothing's taking oh, you out. Go. There we go. Now, now I feel better. Feeling now, I'm feeling better. I got you. You're on my side. Jade, Jade's got me. That's it. <laughs> Beware, ye milk truck drivers. This is the Ramsey Show. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Jack is in Charleston, South Carolina. Hey, Jack, what's up? Hey there, I've got a question for you. I recently graduated college uh, about a year ago. Congrats. What's your degree in? Uh, Mechanical engineering. Good, good. Good for you. Um, And I have been working. I've got a decent job, and I've got about $100,000 in student loans. Mm -hmm. I haven't made any payments because I've been waiting to see if our president was going to do anything um, with our loans, which I don't think is going to happen. So you, f- you figured that out, did you? Yeah, <laughs> which is fine. The interest rates have been deferred, but um, my one hundred thousand dollars is actually made up of two separate loans. One is twenty five thousand about, and the other one is seventy five thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, my cash in the bank right now is about twenty five, twenty six grand, mm-hmm. and I've been wondering if I should just outright kill this smaller loan um, and just get it off my plate because I've also been looking at saving up for a house, um, a down payment on a home. And I just don't know the best way to attack this, um, these two separate loans. What do you make? Um, right now, 86. Good for you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So how famil- How long have you been a listener? Are you pretty familiar with the way we teach? Yes, yes. If I had to guess what you're going to say, it's going to be, I really need to attack these loans. Um, but 
I just don't know if y'all would say an aggressive, aggressive payment plan each month um, and try to take them out um, over the course of the next five years. We'll just do it right now. The smaller well, one, at least. Let me help you. That's what we always say. Okay. A hundred percent of the time. Mm-hmm. And there's several reasons for that. The probability that you actually get out of debt is so much higher the more aggressive you are. Mm-hmm. And it could, because it shortens the time and because it's an all-in commitment. It's an emotional thing as much as it is a mathematical thing. Does that make sense? Yes, sir, it does. And so there, it's weird because the thing kind of works on a curve. I mean, you, you're familiar. You, you, you do this. Uh, it, it's like on one end of the curve, uh, you're going to be in debt forever because the energy is very low. In the middle of the curve, you don't get much of any movement. You don't get movement equal to the equal to the effort, and on the hour end of the curve, you get movement that is unequal in a good way to the effort, because the effort is so there's so much focus of energy, and so yes, it, because personal finance is more behavior than it is, uh, it's more emotions and behavior than it is actual math, especially in a situation like yours, because you're going to only owe seventy five thousand when you get off this call. Mm-hmm. And you make 86, and last year you didn't make anything because mm-hmm. you're a college student. Right. So you don't have any reason to be spending 86. You could you could probably almost knock this out in a year. That's what I think. Yes, sir. I know I have an extremely low rent at the moment as well. So I, I think so. what you're saying in summary is to, to completely kill this, this smaller loan, yep. change gears, and a highly aggressive payment plan to knock out the 75. That's right. Keep yourself a thousand bucks aside like you plan to do. And yeah, highly aggressive payment plan. I agree with Dave. I think you could knock this out in a year. If you wanted to pick up some work on the side or on the weekends, maybe you could do that. I'm not sure, you know, how taxing this new job is or if you're feeling, you know, like, let me just chill for a second. I just got this job. But so what are you, 24? Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. So we're talking about 25 years old. You're making a hundred thousand dollars a year. You don't have payment in the world. Do you know how fast you're going to be a millionaire doing that? Mm-hmm. About eight years. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, that, that'd be awesome. That's yeah. the plan. Do you yeah. see while, how that works? While your contemporaries are all sitting around going, Biden is going to save me. Oh no, he's not. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, I, I, I knew that was going to happen, um, which which is fine. Yeah. Um, I was just waiting to see, you know, what, what the interest rates were going to do. Oh, uh, you know, actually, I feel like I need to mention this one little thing, too. The smaller one has got a much lower interest rate doesn't than matter. the larger one. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Yeah. doesn't okay. matter. You, you, you You're going to go so fast, it's not going to matter. It's going to be calm okay. by the end of the day. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah. and just y- 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 there's the psychological part. When you just n- immediately get rid of one and it's gone for good. That's that's some momentum right yeah, there. Yeah, that's the momentum. You get some positive momentum going. We're getting some physics going on here. So, <laughs> well done, sir. Well yeah, done. Good. Hey, the student loan thing is starting. Uh, there, there is. And everybody talks about how bad it is, and everybody talks about how sad it is, and everybody talks about how upset people are, and all this. And yet, there's a whole other side of this that yeah. there's a lot of positive things going on, especially yes. in our world. On our YouTube page, that's right. We're getting comments of people who have paid off their student loan debts. I wanted to read a few of them. Yeah. So. This is on our YouTube where we've already talked about student loans. There's enough naysayers. These are the people who actually did something about it. This person says, hey, I paid off $72,000 worth of student loan debt in seven years. It's one of the best feelings. I'm now working to pay off my mortgage. I took Dave's advice back in 2020 when the payment pause started. I paid off my loans by the end of that year. It took a few sacrifices, but it was definitely worth it. Wow. This person says, I don't regret going to college and earning my degrees. I do regret not understanding what I was getting myself into when I signed for the loans. Uh, Lived off some of the money. uh, Took a graduated payment plan when I finished school. I did that too, making it impossible for me to pay down the loans. Uh, pay the loans down the first five years of college. I did the same thing. I didn't fully understand how the debt was controlling our finances. Eventually, we refinanced the loans privately before the pandemic, sold off a ton of assets, along with working overtime to pay the loans down. We paid them in full summer 20 of 21. It's insane. The sense of relief that you feel not being strapped down by debt. Yes, I feel that. Boom. This guy says had over $80,000 in student loans, which was part of of $100,000 in consumer debt. Oof. Paid in full in 2019 after three years of grinding. Built a dream house in 2020. Put down 20%. Now on track to pay the house off by 2025. Wow. Getting out of debt is a mindset more than anything. We're continuing to document the journey on 
YouTube. I love that. Last one. She says, as of two days ago, I'm 100% debt free. The last things to go with my student loans and it's no more. The sense of relief is amazing. A sense of relief. Sense of relief. I came up to it three times. Yeah. Yes. That feeling that you get. You know what? And it's not, I don't want to correct them because it's their words and their experience, but it's really not a sense of relief. It's just relief. It's relief. There's a reason you have a sense of relief. It's because you have yes, relief. Yes, it's actual relief. Yeah, it's because <laughs> it's actually there. There's a sense of sense of not being weighed down. Yeah. Why? Because you're not weighed down. There's, that's right. you know, that, there's why that sense is there. So it's yeah, that, that's real. interesting phrasing. It but, is. Uh, but yeah, check out the uh, Ramsey Student Loan Hub for tips and tools and the fastest way to pay off your student loans. RamseySolutions.com slash student loans. Jade's got a lot of help over there. I do, you don't want to do. miss out on it. She can help you. And listen, we want you guys to get these student loans cleared up as fast as you can. If you haven't gotten them cleared by October when they start back, we certainly want you to be prepared mm -hmm. for when they start back because it's it's coming, people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it isn't like we hadn't told you for two years this is what's going to happen. Yeah. So we've told you and told you and told you and told you and told you. And it turns out we're right. And that's the bad news. The good news is we're going to help you. Yeah. And show you what to do. Give you the motivation, the inspiration, and the information to get this done. RamseySolutions.com slash student loans. What all is on that site, Jade? So on that site, I go through three steps with you of what you can do literally today. The first one is getting organized about your student loans because maybe it got sold somewhere. Maybe you're not sure what your payment is or what you owe. I'll help you through that. The second step is for you to understand your payment because there's a lot of payment plans out there. Should I do the save plan? Should I do one of these income driven plans? I'm going to walk you through all the, all of that so you know what to do. And then finally, you got to get on a budget, guys. You need a budget so that you can actually see where your money's going. Do you have the margin to pay it? If you don't, how are we going to get it? I'm going to walk you through all of those three steps. It's full of resources. Trust me on this. I'm talking about this, Dave, it's because free. I did it. It's free. Yeah. You, this isn't like you made this up in a vacuum. How much student loan debt did you all pay off? 280000 Dave. Yeah, and uh, as a part of 400 and something thousand. That's right. And That's right. it took right. seven years to do the whole thing. That's right. But uh, and, and so, you know, you're sitting here with $80,000 in student loan debt. Well, Jade's got you beat. I promise you. And she's proof it can happen. It's proof it can be done. This mm -hmm. can be done. You are not a victim it is time to be a victor. You need to happen to things instead of things happening to you. Dr. Stephen Covey said in the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, the number one habit, proactive. People happen to things, not things happening to them. You are not a victim. You're a victim of your own thinking. And Jade can help you with this. That's what we're here for. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Habakkuk 2.3, patience is not the same as indifference. Patience conveys the idea of someone who is tremendously strong and able to withstand all assaults. Thomas Jefferson said, never spend your money before you have it. It's kind of like, don't go in debt. I like it. <laughs> Loving it. Jeremy's in Cincinnati. Hi, Jeremy. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave, Jade. Uh, glad to be on the show. Well, honored to have you. How can we help? Yeah, so I, I guess the basic uh, point of my question, and I, I know I know you guys usually would, would shoot this down pretty quickly, but it's basically can uh, my wife and I are on baby step four, five, and six, and I wanted to know if we could kind of skip baby steps four and five and just hit six with everything we got. Um, and so a little bit of background: um, we didn't really have much of a baby step two. Um, we are only twenty five. We both just turned twenty five in the last couple months. Um, last fall, we bought our first house and, uh, found out we were pregnant shortly after. And, uh, we just had our first baby boy in, um, 
in April of this year. Congratulations. And so, a lot going yeah, on. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, it definitely was worse than, than we anticipated, but it, it's been a good time. So, um, so yeah, so we have a, a combined income of about 120000 and our mortgage is about one ninety five. And we were considering, um, I'm, I'm an accountant by trade, and so I, I run the numbers like crazy, uh, much to my wife's, you know, a pleasure, I guess. Uh, no, and uh, and I was like figuring out that we could, if we just focused on the house, we could be not even 29 and have a paid for home. And then um, being as young as we are, that we could catch up on that investing pretty quickly and still retire with millions, uh, even if we just did 15% at that point. Okay. So your question is what? Should you do that or what? Yeah, but it would be okay to kind of focus on that house first, get it out of the way, have have more income to well, invest. Well, you're a grown-up. Anything you do is okay. You get to make your choices. That's right. Um, sure. Would I do that? No, I wouldn't do that. Would I tell you to do that? No, I wouldn't tell you to do that because I think that um, you're not going to end up with as much going your way as you will going our way, and that's my reasoning. See, the the thing you did not run your number in your numbers is increased in income. The chances of you having zero increase in income between now and 30 is zero. And you did not run any increase in income in your numbers. You ran very naive, basic, primitive numbers. Did I, am I right? Sure. Yeah. 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 So you're, if you put 15% away, um, you're probably going to pay off the house at about the same period of time. Okay, fair enough. And then you're going to have a paid-for house and have gotten your other stuff going. So the and, and what you're leaving out is the opportunity cost on the money. That's what financial people call it. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the money that right. you put in between now and 30, what that money will become mm -hmm. over the next 30 years is astronomical. Right. And you're missing out on every bit of that. So uh, the, the – uh, semi-balanced approach of 15% of your income going into retirement at baby step four. Now we've got a baby, put 50 bucks a month or whatever aside, let's get something started on college. And we're touching the bases and then just throw everything, including all new raises, um, within reason, let your wife have a new whatever. Mm -hmm. Don't be an accountant, but, um, but yeah, but, but, sure. but throw everything at the house and you're still going to have this house paid off. And probably about the time you thought you were going to anyway, and because now I'm factoring in increases in income, and um, I, I think you're going to be there. I mean, you can do either one. Jeremy, neither, neither one of these, your plan versus our plan is not a uh, recipe for bankruptcy. Right. It's not like the dumbest thing I ever heard on the planet or something like that. You got a house paid for by the time you're 30? I'm loving it. Okay? I think it's a great yeah. plan. I just think ours is probably slightly going to come out ahead. Dave, I, I hear, I hear, I got to be devil's advocate for a minute because I hear a question from the peanut gallery. Okay. And the, the question well, is, what is the peanut gallery saying? <laughs> the Jay? peanut gallery is saying, well, Dave, so it's, it's okay for me to miss out on opportunity costs when I pause my investing to pay off my debt for five years, mm -hmm. but it's not okay for me to pause my investing when I want to pay off my house for five years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's also be very clear. Almost never does it take five years to pay off the debt. True that. You and Sam were highly unusual. Yeah, That's true. Unusual amount of debt. The uh, the vast majority in the 90 percentile of our listeners that follow our stuff That's with right. focused intensity, with mm -hmm. gazelle intensity, are debt free, not counting their house in 18 to 24 Facts. months. And so that is a different period of time for opportunity costs than mm -hmm. he's 20 some yeah, 24. Yeah, he's, he's young. And yeah. he's going to be 30. And so that's six years, not two years. That's true. So there's a difference there. So, and um, yeah, and I'm not talking about, uh, I'm also clearing up uh, cash flow here. That's right. That, that, that is going to offset it. Well, we can't clearing up cash flow in the mortgage too. So peanut gallery would have but that part you'd right. Probably, you'd, you could clear up more depending on the type of debt you have on the front end. Uh, what your debt is and what you Depends on how have. much it is. Yeah, it he, he said they didn't have much of a baby step two. No, they didn't. So in their case, they're 
what he's experiencing the weight of the mortgage payment emotionally. Yeah. Which because he's an accountant. Mm-hmm. So it's very good. So that's that's cool. That's that's excellent. Because by the way, the number two category of people who become millionaires are accountants. Number one's engineer. Number <laughs> three's teacher. Uh, yeah, because they're aware of they're yeah. aware of what's going you, on. You, you, you know, compound interest and uh, spreadsheets are a. Uh, they're their second language, you know, and so he just yeah. his brain works. My my brain works like that. So that's how I've had to fight against my own nerd self at times. <laughs> that's how I know this. you've thought it all through every corridor that this can be thought through. Well, I mean, I started, you know, I I, I mean, like the debt snowball, obviously, is not mathematically correct. Sure, it's a behavior based tool, mm-hmm. not a math based math. tool. Mm-hmm. The the problem is it actually works, and the other one doesn't work. That's right. The avalanche yeah. or whatever the crap people call that. That's just bull. It doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work because people don't play all the way through. Mm-hmm. With the debt snowball, they play all the way through. So all that matters is when you're done, who ended up paying off the most debt the fastest. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what matters. And it's not a theory. It's who's going to actually do it. Yeah. And so the, then that starts to mess with my math nerd self because my math nerd self would say the avalanche works better. Yes, my math nerd self would say interest. never stop compound interest. Mm-hmm. Never do anything to stop compound mm-hmm. interest because it's it's the eighth wonder of the world. Albert Einstein said. So you know, I mean, you don't ever do anything like that. But mm-hmm. uh, so you have to have this. There's more to it than math. Yeah, there's a well. Are the apparent math? Mm-hmm. Sometimes the math that's on the surface is not all the math. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, well, like, yeah, you know, like, for instance, I'm going to borrow money on my home at 6% and I'm going to invest it in the in a good growth stock mutual fund at 10 to 12% and I'm going to make the spread. Well, that's that's that math is not accurate mm-hmm. because you left out risk and you left out taxes. Yeah, and true. so when you adjust 10 to 12% for risk and taxes, it looks a lot like six. <laughs> that's a good point. And so you, you didn't really make anything on your little plan here. Yeah. Uh, and you see these TikTok characters is like, I'm going to teach my 14 year old to arbitrage. Well, maybe you ought to spell it first. Yeah. And maybe you ought to actually understand that arbitrage involves risk and leverage equals risk. And, uh, it a hundred percent of the time it equals risk, more leverage equals more risk. So that's a math thing where we left out parts of math. In his case, he didn't leave out any math. He's really thinking this through. Well, yeah. The only piece of math he left out was increased in income. Yes, that's right. Uh, yep. Uh, but, but, um, and so he's truthfully, if he goes, hangs up and goes, they're crazy. I'm going to go do my thing. He'll be fine. He's going to be, he's still going to be well. Yeah, he'll be it's fine. just a matter of, you know, when he's 40, if we ran this all the way out, mm-hmm. which one of us would end up with the most money, you know, and I'm yeah. promising you, it's we your would, way. we yeah. would, we would, because I've done the case studies for 30 years. I know. You know so it's not, it's not a uh, thing. So that, that's just fun. It's fun to talk about though. It is. And here's the good news about somebody like Jeremy. He's paying it. He's 24 and he's paying attention. I know. That's right. He's not a zombie. That's right. He's not, not burying his head in walking through the streets going, I vote wrong. I hope someone takes care of me. You know, he's not, he's not a zombie. He's actually <laughs> doing, he's actually paying attention. That's right. And he knows, and he's thinking and wise beyond his year. There, yeah. If you pay attention, you're going to be okay. That's right. You're wow. ahead of everybody else. Good stuff. Jade, good show today. It's fun. Oh, Austin, Ben, James, Zach, and Andrew in the booth. Great job. The booth dudes, they did it again. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. What's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.